It's always been architecture since I first met him. We met in 84. We just immediately hit it off. He was in Seattle driving in a, um, a VW Bug with his uh, girlfriend at the time. And they were having a little tiff and she said to him, it's me or architecture. And Stephen said, stop the car. You realize you're walking into a love affair. But this is a guy that, that'll do anything for his work, right? He's still that way. His watercolors, um, modus operandi, it's his methodology of translating what is in his brain. He's not going to start his day littered with email or getting a shirt pressed. I think he's determined to start his day with his mind into something like space. The common kind of metaphors, he, he uses them as kind of points of departure. But it's the departure of his thinking process that leads to architecture. And sometimes the project that we end up building is literally exactly what you see in the watercolor. I mean, the stair that we did at Iowa, if you look at the watercolor and you look at photograph of the stair, it's the same thing. The stairway is just a marvelous and brilliant artistic creation. I think it explains why so few people ever use the elevator. He understands artists in the way that they work and the spaces that they need for inspiration. The building has this great positive energy. Knowing that architecture and landscape architecture students are up all hours of the night, uh, the building glows on campus. He took this idea of these two disciplines interlocking and explored all of the architectural possibilities. That ability of an architect to take an abstract idea and move it through every scale of the building is an incredible talent. He's a very passionate person. If he's convinced about a, a solution, he will push it, you know. And also he's a very charismatic figure, you know. He's able to uh, persuade people because of this charm and, and conviction and passion and, and charisma. You have a sense that he wills these buildings into being as much as drawing them. We did a kind of interlocking kind of facade that can be like a, a series of opening and closing doors. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know, that project was supposed to last for two, for two years. It was built in 93, so it's lasted a long time. Stevens' buildings have a lot of visual power. To me, what makes them really compelling is that there's an intellectual underpinning to them that is coming from places where most architects never go, which is coming out of the larger world of ideas. Under certain conditions, gives off a kind of cloud, you know. You know, it's extremely responsible the way in which he conceives of adding these uh, these new elements to existing institutions. The Hart Hanning Museum of Contemporary Art used to be housed in, in a shirt factory um, and it simply didn't work as a museum. He um, understood the roots of our collection. The roof of this museum is in fact what controls everything here. It is a soft organic construction which resembles uh, shirt sleeves hanging down and sort of creates the whole atmosphere. There's always a theme that we can, we can start to, um, to, to riff on. At first he was interested in this concept inspired out of Pollock in terms of depth of line and space. What resulted was actually a kind of quieter architecture of a line where the light that is projected through the slats and through the lines becomes the very active aspect. It's now 10 years, 11 years since the whole project started. We're friends with the architect, we're friends with the contractor, we're, we're still friends married. with... still <laughs> married. You always had the, these dreams and he actually helped us realize them. Stephen has said several times his favorite material is light. Nelson Atkins, my God, that garage. It's astounding. And the way he was able to take the old museum blended with the new one. What Stephen and I were trying to do with space, light, time, was to put you, the visitor, whoever you are, in that open-minded, super-sensitive state of receptivity. This building is not about ornament, but it is very much about detail. For Stephen's aesthetic to work, 
you have to have perfection. I've been working with Stephen for 20 years and every day he still surprises me with his insights and his ambition and his fearlessness. I think for Stephen, porous was a way of updating the meaning of figure ground and something might appear solid but it in fact is full of negative space, like a sponge. What was exciting at MIT was the fact that, this, that, that the construction of this thing, the way we put it together from these precast elements, um, had a theatrical quality that everybody on campus really enjoyed. The architecture becomes a kind of instrument for people in ways you had no idea. What is unquestionably a remarkable piece, I think, is this hybrid building in Beijing. I mean, I think that building is a kind of a new prototype. I would describe that as a megaphone, which is true of his horizontal skyscraper, to create a, a building which is also a place. It's an infrastructural bridge system mobilized as architecture. It's, it's unprecedented. It's, it's brilliant. Stephen always thinks of how will this building work eternally. That ideas once understood can really take hold and change the way people think. Part of the joy and, and, and excitement is not really knowing what's going to come next. It's always fully on conceptual, fully on experiential, and I think that's the thrill of working with him. He's a character that wakes up in the morning and decides what aspect of the world can I change. Stephen is a very optimistic person, but I don't think, it's not that he thinks he can change the world, it's that he has belief that architecture can change the world.